In this video, we're going to cover some basic graphs and uh, basic summary statistics, frequencies, cross tabulations, things like that. So let's start with uh, some basic graphs. Okay, so um, load whatever data you got, right? In this case, we're going to go to our task menu under task and utilities, and then under the graph sub menu. First thing we're going to do is a pie chart. Pretty uh, simple, basic graph that comes up a lot. Double click on that to open up the pie chart window. You want to choose the data you need to work on with this one. I'm going to choose my first data set. And then for pie chart uh, data, really um, pie charts are best suited with uh, long data sets of qualitative data. So you'd want something that had a big long string of words and uh, you know those words would be like yes and no and then the pie chart would show you how many yeses you had versus how many no's you know it does proportions so depending on the data you have pie charts work or don't work this set of data it doesn't work with really well and i'll show you why so let's um, look at program right you can see that program is a qualitative data because it has this little like a, it almost looks like a pie piece, right? Pie slice, and it says A. And then these two are both quantitative because they've got the one, two, three. So like I said, pie charts are um, best used with qualitative. So we're gonna load this and we're gonna run it and look what we get. It is a terrible pie chart because you just have six equal pieces and the reason why if you go and look at this data right click on output data so you can see what the data looks like you can see that we just have under program six things so all it said was oh well this word showed up once this showed up once 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 so they all had a frequency of one and therefore i'm going to make my pie chart based on how often i see those things they all get one out of six so those slices are all one sixth so there is a way to change it when we have this kind of data and down here under measure instead of frequency count hit variable and then for variable we're going to choose the expend variable and we'll just leave it at sum and then we'll run this and now you can see that it instead of uh, basing it on how many times each of these words shows up under the variable program it bases each word on its corresponding value from the variable expend for expenditure so there was 852 for social security right 612 for national debt and so on and so forth so each of these pie slices now gives you the proportion of the whole for each of those numbers so that's helpful. Well, it might also be helpful for the reader to know percentages, right? So this gives them raw amounts. And if the reader knows enough about math, they could sit there and they could add all these numbers up and they could figure out what the total expenditures were, or maybe you could give it to them in a table, you know, and then they could calculate percentages. Again, you could give that to them in a table. But if you want SAS to um, put it in the pie chart, that's where things get a little limited. Of course, there are ways to um, have SAS uh, calculate things, right? You could go into the code and you could add some lines of data in here where you could create a new variable called percent and you could uh, calculate percentages based on the values that you get from the expenditure variable. And it's, you know, if you know how to program, it's not too difficult, but it's obviously a lot easier to instead go and do that in Excel, create a whole new variable and then load that into SAS and do it that way. And that's what I did is I created a new variable and I called it percent. And all this is is the percentages instead of the actual data values. And now when I run it, you can see that the shapes are the same that they were before, but instead of having raw numbers, right, it gives you percentages. So that's the, kind of the basics of a pie chart. Let's say you want to do a bar chart. Now again, remember both of these um, graphs are best suited to qualitative level data or 
at the most, you don't want to use ratio level data. These, these really aren't good for numbers. You can use them for numbers, but both pie charts and bar charts are supposed to compare separate groups. So they're supposed to be things that are in groups, right? And that's where qualitative data comes in because everything is grouped by those words. Um, but you can do it with numerical data, but usually only when the numerical data, again, is in groups. So if you have ratio level or continuous level data, it's best to kind of recode them into groups first before you do bar charts and pie charts. It's just matching the uh, graph to the type of data you have. But in this case, we're going to stay with our um, set of data from one, right? That same stuff that we saw before, where there are really only one variable and then how much was spent and then its percentages. So the category again is going to be program. And if we do frequency count, right or even frequency percent look what happens you remember how last time we got a six equal slices well now we get six equal bars because again it's just looking at the data and it's counting how many times each of these words shows up in the data set for the variable program and they each showed up once so what you have to do instead is do the variable trick like before and do expenditure right and run that and then you get bars that represent heights that represent quantities and it makes a lot more sense the really nice thing that um, bar charts does that pie charts doesn't is under the variable right you can do the sum you can do the mean and you can do percent of the sum which was an option that we didn't have for the pie chart where it will now if we run it list things based on percentages instead of values you can see that the, sh the bars didn't change which makes sense right I mean the heights are going to be the same whether it's a count or a percentage the only thing that changes is the scale so that's the nice thing that um, bar charts does that pie charts does of course, depending on the type of data you have and what you want to do with it, right? you can group your analyses, you can weight your analyses. So that's how you can kind of force things into bar charts if you have the wrong kind of data. Is you can group them and, and weight them and those types of things. You can also uh, play around with the appearance. right? You can change labels, colors. Uh, you can change things for both the axes. You can put in titles and footnotes all sorts of stuff to kind of personalize your graphs. And again, if you go to the code, you can always see what these things do to each thing. And then that helps you learn how to do coding and change things by hand. And obviously you've got all the other things you could do here. You know, a scatter plot is pretty typical. You use those all the time. And um, histograms, right? Those are kind of the other two uh, widely used ones. So you can make histograms and scatter plots all from the, the graph menu along with pie charts and bar charts.